Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Wednesday afternoon, August 24th, 2016. Quick look at the eastern Pacific. A couple of areas that are likely to develop, but both of them headed west and away from Mexico. So we can draw a big smiley face here. No worries for Mexico. Pacific coast going to stay hurricane free for the time being, so that's great news there. In the Atlantic Basin, things could not be more disjointed and confusing with uncertainty abound. Uh, this is about as hard a forecast as I have seen in a long time. It reminds me a little bit last year when we had Hurricane Joaquin, but that wasn't so much was it going to be a hurricane as it was where would it go. You remember it formed from an upper level low and this region kind of drifted off to the south and west, developed into a substantial hurricane some of the modeling, the U.S.-based models brought it up and then curved it in like this, whereas the European model, for most of the time, there was a couple of days there where it was also trying to bring it back towards the U.S. as an upper-level low developed over the southeast, but eventually the euro changed its mind, so to speak, and turned out to be right with a track out to sea. But those days leading up to that, boy, it was just mind-numbing trying to decipher which model was going to be right because you had so many of the US generated computer model guidance suggesting a mid-Atlantic landfall from Joaquin and then the European and its ensemble group kind of saying nope gonna have to go the other way so we're sort of in the same boat here again with this system 99L as to whether or not it'll even it will even develop and then if it does where does it go so wow challenging time ahead for sure the uh, other tropical storm, Gaston sitting out here, probably going to become a hurricane at some point. It's trying. Remember, we don't have a, an appreciable upward motion pattern sitting over the Atlantic Basin right now. The sort of suppressed atmosphere is still in place where we don't have wide-scale forcing or upward motion to help with development. So it's kind of astonishing, if you ask me, to even have what we do. 99L here, Gaston here, another system coming off. Uh, that we're even getting this because of the current phase of the MJO not enhancing development potential, that's for sure. But there it is nonetheless. So here's a visible satellite shot, and this is a mess. It looked more organized earlier in the day, and I think even yesterday. But the devil is in the details, right? And you can clearly see here, just as well as I can, we have a low-level swirl moving here to the north of Puerto Rico, and it's just not covered by any deep convection. When the showers and thunderstorms, for example, this band right here that's developing, and maybe this is the first sign, we'll see. Uh, if this were to wrap all the way around and really start to explode, then you would say, okay, it's beginning to in intensify. Uh, but it still has some elongation with it. Uh, you can see there's just a general broad turning. Even right there, there's a little bit of vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. Stronger over here. But then sort of this whole sharp tropical wave rolling along without pinching off, if you will, a closed low-level center with organized thunderstorms around it. So even though we do have this exposed center, it's not quite enough to be classified as a tropical depression based on textbook you know, history from the past tells us, etc. It's just the way it is. It's all academic, but it is and has been bringing some squally weather, just like we talked about it would, to portions of the Northeast Caribbean Sea, and that's going to continue. You can see some convective activity blowing up here on the eastern part of Hispaniola, and these rain showers, some of them very heavy, can produce flash flooding and mudslides and all things unpleasant related to that. Well, anytime it looks like a goldfish, anybody have kids or yourself that likes those goldfish, right? Those little crackers. Well, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like a goldfish sitting down there. It's a lot better organized in the vorticity field than it was yesterday. You may recall this time yesterday, it looked more like this. It was kind of elongated. Remember that? Well, here it is today, and it's more circular here on the east, but it still has this sort of weird lobe over here on the west side of it. And if we go back to the satellite animation, you can see that, that there's your area of spin or higher vorticity. And then over here, there's also 
something going on with this energy and vorticity and they're competing with each other and that doesn't help it to develop. Even Gaston over here with very tight circulation and vorticity near the center does have sort of these weird lobes hanging off. It's not quite there yet and that's why it's not a hurricane. These things matter when you're looking at them in the atmosphere and like I said this is the analogy of looking at an x-ray where you can really see the structure of something and in this case the weather and it shows us what's going on and we can verify that with satellite pictures so what is the deal why isn't this developing yet well I haven't had a lot of uh, or seen a lot of talk about dry air as of late so maybe that's not as much of an issue now it seems to be wind shear and our system is located right in here and thanks to the awesome graphics of the University of Wisconsin and their cooperative institute for meteorological satellite studies we can zoom in and take a look I don't have any cloud cover on here because I want to make it clear what's happening you noticed and you remember that the system is rotating through here and so if we put an L in here and kind of indicate sort of a broad area of low pressure located in here perhaps well you can see it's in the red zone right there so wind shear coming over the top of it helping to blow those thunderstorms away from that center of circulation decoupling it and that is not healthy for it to develop this will need to expand more to the north and put it under that protective cover of lighter winds aloft and until it does that and unless it does that it's not going to develop much at all and this is a fairly narrow band of unfavorable area of wind shear you see the green is waiting for it and the Turks in the Caicos and the areas north of Haiti and in the southeast to central Bahamas also in its favor been talking about this for several weeks uh, the water temperature is only going to increase along the potential forecast track or formation area whatever you want to call it uh, this is upper ocean heat content very stout even for late August this is a lot warmer than it should be in many areas especially up in this region uh, sea surface temperatures and then the deep water very warm compared to normal the Gulf of Mexico specifically if this is going to take a track across South Florida like the Euro showed last night and come into southwest Louisiana the European model depicting that uh, it's going to traverse 30 degrees Celsius surface water and if we go back and look at the upper ocean heat content map there's an area of lower ocean heat content sitting in here and then this is the loop current that kind of broke off into a warm eddy and uh, has been drifting around the Gulf so this would provide a lot of extra fuel and then right up against the coastline is your shelf water always there maybe cooled off a little bit because of all the rainfall and the runoff but if this were to track across the Gulf towards Louisiana or towards Texas as examples only uh, the European last night showed that but the ECMWF to be specific when I say the European I don't want to peg any one person you know what I'm talking about uh, it showed that and um, so that's something to, you know to consider what if it shows uh, the track does what the European showed today the morning run today brings it in through South Florida and then kind of comes up into this region overall all these surface temperatures are also 30 to 31 degrees Celsius very warm but not as much time over water and it has land interaction to contend with here with the peninsula of Florida so it's interesting and if we get to the model output I'll show you and kind of talk about that so the 18z guidance this is the afternoon package of the various model runs some of these were run earlier today and some of them are you know the simpler models get run basically right at 18z or UTC and you can see the overall envelope is generally towards South Florida some of the models still trying to cut it across but uh, you still have some of them doing that sort of bend whoops try again that bend right there back to the west all of this is important if it even develops at all but notice too it looks like Hispaniola tearing this apart won't be part of its demise if it's not ever going to develop so you can remove this from the equation it looks like because it's going to track north of what we call the hurricane shredder and so that would give it plenty of time over open water especially once it really starts to get more distance from land up in this region the central and northwest Bahamas now the GFS has been interesting to say the least remember these models a lot of them have ensemble members 
And again, I liken that to you know, a wind ensemble or a brass ensemble. You might have a singular, fantastic trumpet player, and maybe that's the operational. And this is the analogy here. And then the rest of the ensemble group is made up of very good, but maybe not as good as the lead guy. And those are the other people. But together, they make up the ensemble or the orchestra, if you want to look at it in the broader scope. And then it makes beautiful music, right? Well, that's what hopefully ensemble prediction is supposed to do, is to give clarity by having a lot of different variables put in to change things, the outcome on the the operational model, you, you get an ensemble, and if there's a, a good agreement amongst all those models, that gives you higher confidence. Uh, just like when the orchestra plays well together, then you get to go listen to a fine evening of music. If it's bad and nobody's been practicing, you know how that can go, and so that's what I'm going with here. For my analogy, and you can clearly see this is a bad night at the orchestra because you've got some ensemble members way out in the Atlantic over here, and another one sitting over the Big Easy. That's a pretty big spread, folks. That is not the sign we're looking for for a confident forecast. The European ensembles, I don't have a way to show them to you here. Uh, I will be interested to see what the afternoon ensembles look like, and uh, we'll see. Uh, last night, I remember checking things out, and many of the ensemble members of the European were in the Gulf of Mexico, Maybe all 51 members. That's a big group, right? The uh, GFS has about 20 total members here. And as you can see from the early morning run, a lot of them aim it right towards Florida here, but less of them into the Gulf after that. Sort of that Andrew, Katrina, Betsy blend of a track. If you know your hurricanes, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and why is this the case? Well, it looks like this big stout ridge of high pressure that was supposed to develop up here may not be as stout. Uh, it's late summer. The water temperatures in the western Atlantic are very warm. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm not going to speculate too much. I'm just kind of showing you what I can show you here. Uh, until something develops, if it does, let's just stick to the facts, and I think that's the best course of action. And part of that, the intensity you got sort of this one model here that goes off on its own, but the H wharf, yeah, it, it didn't do well in the 12Z run at strengthening this thing. So the overall guidance envelope for intensification, fairly flat overall, not many of them making it to hurricane strength, and certainly nothing really ramping it up like this. So it's just wait and see. That's pretty much all I can tell you, and I think it's obvious at this point. Um, we just don't know. We're going to have to watch. But I hate it because, as I said yesterday, every day that we're waiting, if it's going to rapidly intensify before landfall like some of the models have shown, we would rather know early, obviously, than later. And we don't have that advantage right now. So just stay vigilant, keep watching, and we'll see what happens. Maybe it turns out to be nothing, and the global forecast system or GFS was right all along for the most part although it had its periods of time where it developed this into a significant hurricane too. Boy, it's just maddening, isn't it? We just want there to be clear answers, and unfortunately, there aren't. All right, well, for future video updates, certainly uh, enjoy them on YouTube. Subscribe to get notifications, etc. Like the, the post, whatever. Uh, and then follow us on Twitter, Hurricane Track spelled out for you right there. And I haven't mentioned this much because it's more of a landfall-based app about the impact. But we do have an app in the App Store and on Google Play, and uh, it's called Hurricane Impact, two different words. And it does feature the blog and the video updates here, and we have our own live webcams, weather data, and more when we go into hurricanes for, in field work. But that comes later. It's much more about the information and uh, blog updates and these video posts, and then taking you into the field with that app to show you the impact through live weather data. I'll go into this in more detail if the time comes, but thought I'd mention it today if you want to have everything that we do on the go, except live video. We don't have live video in the app yet. It's too complicated, and we have too many live streams that we would be running anyway. You wouldn't be able to watch them all in the app at the same time, so it's pointless to even put them in there. I could put links to them to view externally, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself. We can talk about that again later. Anyhow, search Hurricane Impact on the App Store, 
and on Google Play, and hopefully you'll like it. You can certainly get uh, what I produce on the go anywhere you are. And don't forget to press the little update button and make sure you have the latest information if you do have the app. Pull down the videos, click the little circular thing for the blog. You know, make sure you're current, all right? So that's it. I'm done for the day. Uh, Going to be an interesting night to see if the, if the Zero Z models continue this sort of, well, maybe not much is going to happen thought, or uh, or if we're going to go back to looking at the Euro with a fairly, uh, I don't want to say scary, but certainly unpleasant outcome for the Gulf of Mexico. I just don't know, so we'll all watch together. I am Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. Hey, thanks as always for tuning in, and we'll talk again tomorrow.